Sweet Home is often considered to be the great granddaddy of the modern survival horror game, and is one of the better known Famicom games to never be released in North America. But it's not just that one game that was too gory or violent for North America, it's also an absolute masterpiece. As a turn-based RPG, it has aged better than any other on the system by going against tradition. As a survival horror game, many of the common conventions of the genre were birthed and nearly perfected in Sweet Home. As a piece of horror fiction, it is genuinely dark and scary, with probably the most shocking and unsettling moments in an NES game. Yeah, chiller and wampaka graffiti? You ain't got nothing. In short, Sweet Home is as brilliant as it was trailblazing. You may have heard of this game, but you never thought it was this good. Because I thought I'd seen it all. I thought I knew the NES, but I hadn't seen anything. I hadn't played Capcom's horror masterpiece, Sweet Home. The history behind Sweet Home is, of course, that it was based on a cheesy Japanese movie. And at the time I made this video, the movie was up on YouTube, so I gave it a watch. And it's pretty good, you know, nothing spectacular. Now, I'm not sure which came first, the movie or the game, but I suspect the movie took longer to make, and since both were released on the same day, the idea of Sweet Home probably first started as a movie, meaning Sweet Home is technically a licensed game. And since the game was more enjoyable than the movie, if you ask me at least, it means this is one of the very, very few licensed games that is not just really good, but in fact better than the license it's based on. Again, that's not to say the movie was awful, it was just very... Eh. But if I can make a recommendation, play the game first because they more or less tell the same story. So watching the movie first will spoil a lot of the really good scenes in the game. The movie is really nothing special, and had it not been for the game, nobody will be talking about it except hardcore movie nerds. But I'm not a movie nerd, I'm a video game nerd, so let's get to the game. Sweet Home was released in Japan on December 15th, 1989, and was never released anyplace else, and I doubt there were ever plans to. The story goes, the North American censors got their hands on the game and just went, are you kidding? And rejected the game outright, which is absolutely no surprise. And keeping in mind how strict Nintendo's censors were back in the late 80s, there is absolutely no way they could have cleaned this game up for America. They would have had to change everything. And even today, if this game were to find its way to Virtual Console, which if you're wondering is extremely unlikely, it would most likely get an M for Mature Rating. Or at least it should, not just for the violence and the gore, but the tone and content of the story. Once the story starts to unfold, some very heavy and quite frankly shocking things come about. The producers of Sweet Home made exactly the game they wanted to make, and it's a better game because of it. Yeah, there's no way this game could have ever come out in America. Though I can't help but wonder what Wisdom Tree would have done to Sweet Home if they'd gotten their hands on it. Pardon the pun, but holy shit, I'd play that game in a heartbeat. But then, how exactly am I playing this game? Well, just so everyone knows, I'm playing Sweet Home on what is called a reproduction cartridge. Furthermore, I'm playing a fan-translated version of the game. Since it was never released outside of Japan, it has no official translation. Essentially, I'm playing a translated ROM hack placed on a blank NES cartridge, so nothing about what I'm playing was officially released by Nintendo of America. This being said, when you start a new game, you're given the option to change your party's names, and I highly recommend changing them to something more familiar. You'll understand why in a minute. At this point in the review, I should mention the story. But you know, I went into this game only knowing that it was too hot for American eyes. And that's how it should be. The less you know, the better. So here's a very brief synopsis. A film crew travels to the desolate Mamiya Mansion to document and preserve the late painter Ichiro Mamiya's collection of frescoes. But it's rumored to be haunted by the ghost of his late wife, Lady Mamiya. Undaunted, our heroes go in anyway and of course find out that it is indeed haunted by the ghost of Lady Mamiya the second they enter the giant mansion. And telling you any more would only spoil the experience. The story isn't so much about your party, but is rather your party piecing together the horrific events that took place in the mansion many years ago. This means there aren't long dialogue scenes or even character development within your party. 
Instead, you have to piece most of the plot together from hidden messages in frescoes, Ichido Mamiya's journal entries, and messages from recently and not so recently slain corpses littered throughout the mansion. Think of it like all the files and newspaper clippings you collect in Resident Evil. And the story is well paced, too. At first, Sweet Home supplies you with helpful hints and direction, but once you got the hang of things, the story takes an abrupt and dark turn, announcing the shit has officially started. And since this is an NES game, they gotta keep their shit concise. It pulls no punches and wastes no time. It's great. Now, I've already mentioned that Sweet Home definitely has its... Whoa! Moments. Whoa! And I'm sure a lot of you aren't convinced. Whoa! Sure, this is an NES game, but this is an NES game! You thought Hitler's head exploding was graphic? Trust me, I could show you some shit! And I'm not just talking about that one video you may have seen on YouTube, which by the way, if you have, you're completely missing the context if you haven't actually played the game. It's way more fucked up if you don't understand what's actually happening. It's also one of the most memorable scenes in the game, and one that should not be spoiled. So do me a favor, just stay off of YouTube. Play the game and just stay off of YouTube. Besides, it's not the gory bits, of which there are a few, that are scary. It's more the grim tone and content of the story. I'm prepared to be taken aback and disturbed when I play a horror game on Xbox or PlayStation. But a game on the NES? I'm completely out of my element here. There were many times where I had to look down at my hands just to reassure myself I was in fact playing an NES game. It's maybe the only game on the system whose story completely arrested my attention, or I kept playing because I just had to know what was going on and what was going to happen next. It may not be one of video games' all-time great pieces of storytelling, but it may be the system's definitive piece of storytelling. Clash at Demon Head, Golgo 13, Crystalis, Deja Vu all have great stories, sure but they never reach the impressive level of cohesiveness and allure of Sweet Home. The story is great, but I wouldn't dare spoil any of it. Just take my word for it. It's a fun, scary good time. But we all know that story and setting don't make a game. If a game ain't fun to play, is it going to be any fun at all? So is Sweet Home fun to play? <sighs> Get comfortable. Sweet Home is an experience unlike anything else on the system.